Hello guys and welcome to the first C++ tutorial video. I will record two parts, one of me learning and one of me teaching. But all in all this video will be more of a tutorial. Load and open Microsoft Visual Studio 2012. First download Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. Now, how do I start? Go to File, New, Project. Hmm, what do I do first? Select Win32 Console Application and enter a name for your project. Let's call this AMF Code App. Okay, seriously, what the hell do I do first? Now this next dialog box will come up. Press Next and ensure that you select the empty box project. The empty project box even. Search now on Google. Search now on Google. Now this is your table or your work area. Right click on the source files, go to add and select a new item. Select the C++ file and then give that a name. So let's call that the code bit. <laughs> Just watch the video um, on how to get started. Uh, <laughs> oh, this can only go well. Now let's get into the code. Uh, we need to first tell the code to pull up a set of pre-written functions that we can use in the code. Why Why explain main if the code starts with something else? We do this by writing hashtag, if you're on Twitter, include, followed by a directive, which in this case is iostream, and this is wrapped in triangular brackets. Is it just me or does iostream sound like a drink for programmers? Yeah. Next comes the line using namespace std followed by a semicolon. Sexually transmitted diseases? This tells the compiler to use a group of functions that are part of sexually transmitted diseases? The standard library. Oh, this allows us to use functions such as cout, good, which we will use soon. Now we write int main and an open and close bracket. This tells the compiler that there is a function named main and it returns it turns an integer hence int. Hmm. Main allows us to call upon other functions either written by us or provided by the compiler. I hate main so much right now. Every program in C++ will have main in it as it is called upon when the when the program first executes. Oh. Now we have essentially called everything. We need to build a body of code using some of the functions such as cout. Good. We will start using we will start by using a curly brace. This signifies the start and later on the end of a block of code. Oh, oh. I know I'm yawning but I'm just just trying to process this. The syntax of C++ is such that we need to write cout. The code object is used to display text pronounced cout followed by two opening triangular bracket symbols as this tells uh, the code that we want to output that we want the output to be the literal string i might need a literal rope to make a literal noose and hang myself literally does the word literally sound weird to you now we type whatever we want into here so let's go with the typical hello world and we end it with a backward slash n and this is one character and it tells the code to start a new line this is this line is also ended with a semicolon now if we were to compile this it would pop up and end without us really taking it in that's because the code goes through itself and is just ended uh, so obviously that can happen in a split second or however fast your computer is that's why we are going to add the command sin dot get open and close bracket and end that with a semicolon as well. What this does is it waits for a user interaction. So that way the app will not close because it will wait for somebody to press enter, thus giving us time to admire our creation. Upon reaching the end of main, grrr, the closing brace our, the closing brace, our program will return the value of zero, an integer, hence why we told the main to return to an int to the operating system. 
This return value is important as it can be used to tell the OS whether our program succeeded or not. A return value of 0 means success, ka-ching, and it returned automatically. But only for main other functions require you to manually return a value. That would be fun. But if we want to return something else such as 1, we would have to do it with a return statement. Would that mean it's not a success? Because then it's not 0? Uh, I have no idea what this means. The code does not seem to work without it. I still don't know what it means. As in, I know what it does, but I don't see why it doesn't work without this. Uh, but after that, after writing this, uh, return one semicolon, we can end the code by closing it off with a curly closing brace. Woohoo! Finished! Press debug. Woohoo! Finished! And watch your creation come to life. Woohoo! Finished! Thank you for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed the tutorial. I'll be sure to be making more. This was uh, definitely interesting, definitely a lot of fun. Yes, yes! I ain't never, ever going to do this again. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 what? No, no, no! If you guys have any problems or difficulties, um, I'll probably put the link of the website that I've been following the tutorial of down below. Uh, it is the first episode, this is the first lesson of a website I'm on. If you know a better one, one that you've personally used, one that you think is just better, one you think that might be more fun or has a better end goal, then uh, feel free to tell me because this is only the first one, I've not really done anything yet. Uh, this, was, this was really good though, it's definitely a brilliant learning experience. Jumping into the world of code. Uh, <laughs> For all the people who've seen me code in Advanced Map Freak, um, in advanced map and stuff it's a uh, it's a lot a lot different to that oh! so uh thank you guys for watching uh and i'll see you guys again